passive flexion, end feel, elastic. Passive extension, one hand at the wrist, the other hand on the elbow joint. The movement is performed with both hands simultaneously, the end feel is hard. Passive pronation, for assessing the elastic end feel, only a very slight overpressure is needed at the end of range. If too much pressure is applied, the necessary information cannot be felt anymore. Passive supination. The end feel is elastic. Notice the long thumb contact. It helps to really reach the end of the movement. Resisted flexion. Test for the brachialis and biceps muscles. The brachialis muscle is more involved when the test is performed with the forearm held in pronation. Resisted extension. Test for the triceps muscle. Resisted pronation. Test for the pronator teres muscle and the golfer's elbow. A long thumb contact affords a better stabilization in order to keep the test isometric. Resisted supination. Test for the supinator and the biceps muscles. Use the same grip as for pronation, but now reinforced. For the next test, a different starting position is required in order to avoid a false negative answer. Resisted wrist flexion, test for the flexor muscles. Resisted wrist extension, test for the extensor muscles. Notice that resistance is given at the hand in a neutral position. When the resisted extension is positive, in fact, we test six different structures. Extensor carpi radialis longus, Extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digitorum communis, extensor indicis proprius, and extensor digiti quinti. The question is now, how do you differentiate those structures? Well, we repeat the test, but this time not with the fingers extended, but with the fingers flexed. And if the test then still is positive, well, then you excluded the finger extensors. So what is left? Extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. How can you differentiate now? Well, you do a radial deviation against resistance for the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, and ulnar deviation against resistance for the extensor carpi ulnaris. How can you differentiate between the longus and the brevis? Well, that's going to be possible by means of palpation.